25% pinches in the finale of this stage of the Vuelta a España. Rampas, Inhumanas, the Spanish, Murder We, whatever you want to call it, 133Ks for stage 11 from Antequera to Valdefeñas de Jaén. It's not the hardest stage before the finale. There's not too much climbing. There's one categorized climb, which is 8Ks at 5%, with bonus seconds 3 2 1 at the top. But then there's an 800 meter steep punch to the finish. They've used it in the Vuelta a España before. I think Danny Moreno did well there. And a select and smaller breakaway went today, which the Peloton was happy with. Jumbo Visma, Ineos, and Bike Exchange seemed happy with this composition, with Edward Plancart on Alperson, who actually won an uphill finish recently against Gonzalo Serrano, and of course the strongest rider here, Magnus Court, who won a stage last week, that 2K 8% climb. And Jumbo Visma, after deliberately shipping the jersey yesterday, decided to pace today, which made sense, of course, to finish suits Primoz Roglic perfectly, and Nathan Van Hoydonk, Hofstede, Uman Bauman had their work cut out today, keeping the break in check, because you can't say, oh, I'm going to take back 30 seconds on court on the final climb. He's so strong, and even on that 8K climb, they barely took any time out of him. But they were fortunate to get some help from Bike Exchange with Halson and Stannard pacing, and then Schultz on the climb, who obviously wanted Matthews to have a chance to win this day from the GC group, whereas obviously EF, who have a similar style rider in court, a little bit less quick in bunch sprints, well, like the breakaway is the place to be because he's not going to beat riders like Primoz Roglic in this really steep finish. Onto that 8K climb, and Magnus Court promptly left his breakaway compatriots behind us by doing long turns in the break. He had a 44 second gap with 15Ks to go, and despite four or five teams collaborating behind with Schultz and Yeve, Verona, eventually Stephen Kreisweig pacing, he crested with a 27 second gap on the GC group and Ineos and Jumbo Visma with Omen had to work hard in the valley afterwards to eat in another 10 seconds into that gap under the Flamme Rouge, only 15 seconds and the climb starts with about 800 metres to go out of a tight right hand corner. Positioning is very important and you see Carlos Verona who's been doing a magnificent job recently got extended for Movistar. Keeping Henrik Maas in second wheel, Roglic third wheel with Koos behind him, Jack Hayes just in front of Egan Bernal a little bit further back and so after stage six when Ineos kind of played into Roglic hands when they paced on that climb it was unlikely to be them taking it up early in the climb. Magnus Court, he's not on the steepest section yet. He's still going about 27, 28 k's an hour. At this point, it only gets steep as they, he gets over this little grate in the road, and then it kicks up to 17, 22%. And the peloton makes it through that right-hand corner. Enric Mas, first wheel, fantastic job from Movistar. But notice, Sepp Kuss is about to do a really good lead up for Primoz Roglic. We have his three-second power in the bottom right-hand corner, and you can see just moving up for Sepp Kuss, he has to do about 800 watts as a 900 watt peak just to get in front of Roglic to begin his lead out on the steep section and yeah they're not on the steepest part yet so having a guy pacing in front of you matters already Roglic is about two seconds three seconds on the road ahead of Egan Bernal because it's strung out so much the camera cuts away you still see Kuss now doing 700 watts as they get onto that 23% section he drops down to 600 watts and he gets passed by Roglic and Enric Maas. Roglic swinging wide like Haig was behind him and it, it narrows here and it nearly pinches Enric Maas. He's lucky not to crash. And you can see Koos is still doing 500 watts and yet he's slid back a fair way. Gino made it perhaps overextending trying to chase them on that pinch. It levels off here with 500 meters to go and we nearly see a replay of stage six, the Cuyera stage last week where Court nearly got caught with one kilometer to go. He only had about a three second gap and you see Mars talking to Primoz Roglic. It's like that stage where Narvaez paced really hard at the start. Then there was cat and mousing. Maybe some riders went over their limit on the 2k climb and he slipped away court at the end after Roglic jumped out a bit late. So perhaps we were going to see that happen again because obviously Enric Mas is not going to lead out Primoz Roglic on this finish and Roglic trusts his punch at the end in the last 75 meters with no Alaphilippe here and especially with Valverde crashed out. He knows he's the quickest man. Haig paces the group behind with Lopez, with Mas up the road. Lopez that would sit in the wheels of the draft. Pretty negligible at this point. Yates yeah, doing better today I would say. Bernal not 
dropped yet. Gro Schuttner in that group. You see the healthier gap for Magnus Court with 250 meters to go. And Enric Mars has decided to go long. He's got Roglic glued to his wheel. And unlike the other day, Mars and Roglic pass Magnus Court, who still did a magnificent job once again. Haig loses the wheel of Roglic through this corner. Roglic comes out of Mars' wheel, similar to how Alaphilippe slid out of his wheel at the end of the murder we on Flesh Wallon this year and wins this stage just like Jumbo Visma drew it up in the team bus, taking 10 bonus seconds, a three second gap on Mars, five on Lopez, and seven on Haig, who finishes on the same time as Adam Yates. Bernal actually lost 11 seconds plus 10 bonus seconds to Roglic, although Mars and Lopez, Mars in particular, are looking the real threats to Primoz Roglic. I think Mars and Roglic were apologizing to each other for getting in each other's way in that pinch point on a 25% section of the climb. But Roglic, glad to see, unaffected by that spill yesterday, wins the stage ahead of Mars, Lopez, Hay, Yates, Bade, Groschartner, Vlasov, Bernal, and Odd Christian Eiking. A nice performance from Odd Christian Eiking. Be interested to see how he would have gone in the break, say, if he didn't have the red jersey, but he still has it. He's still 58 seconds ahead of Guillaume Martin and about two minutes ahead of Primoz Roglic, who extends his gap over Mars by seven seconds and by 11 seconds on Miguel Angel Lopez. Kuz loses the spot on GC to Adam Yates, but that's down to the sacrifice he made for Roglic at the start of the climb. You see, he went over his limit leading up Primoz Roglic for did like 658 watts for 30 seconds. He had to drop it back down for about 30 seconds plus, about 350. 50 watts and then he kicked it up back over 400 at the end so you can see how difficult it is to do a lead out to be a domestique but also ride for your own gc on the same short steep finish but mission accomplished for jumbo visma this is what roglic had to say after the stage yeah it was a hard stage uh, anyway it was short but super hot again and uh yeah i oh yeah i was also suffering a lot but yeah luckily here at the end uh, I had enough for a win. It was a nice finish uh, with steep uphill, uh, which yes, normally I can do well. So uh, yeah, it was a nice challenge. Uh, the team the team did an uh, amazing job, pushing uh, really hard through the whole day, uh, keeping uh, the breakaway on, on the distance. So big thanks to them uh, that, yeah, was this possible at the end. And was this the way to put uh, yesterday's crash behind and get the confidence uh, back? Yeah, also, uh, uh, yeah, it's always, uh, Anyway, it was still, uh, yeah, like I said, it was a good day yesterday and uh, I wanted to take positive things, but uh, yeah, we did this today. We go on, it's, uh, it's yeah, it stopped, it's beautiful. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like it down below if you did. We've had back to back good stages in the Vuelta a España so far. Hopefully, another good one tomorrow. Make sure you subscribe to the channel down below so we can hit 130k subscribers before the end of the Vuelta, and I'll see you with the recap tomorrow. Ciao.